Hey everyone, today I've got a lot of cool new things to show you that I think you'll really, really appreciate. First, there was a new sampler that just released that is going to significantly change the speed by which you're able to generate your images. I'm not talking a little, I am talking a lot. This is going to really revolutionize the way that you think about how you do your image planning. Secondly, based on popular demand, we're going to talk about masking faces. How do you do it? How do you detail it? How do you make sure you get some and not others? That's all going to be discussed. And finally, as a quick bonus, I found a really easy node to give your images a cinematic type feel. As always, thank you so much for sharing and subscribing and sending to your friends. The more that people learn about these videos, the more they'll be able to learn about AI Gen and how easy it is to do. All right, let's get into it. All right, to start us off, we have an updated loader. Couple little changes here, including the speed boost. So as you can see here, nothing major changing in the top, but in the bottom, uh, we have a cool new way of defining new images. Uh, we basically have a true false here uh, button. Uh, this is actually using Chris tools. It's a switcher, uh, very easy to do. As you can see, I have my normal image definer in terms of the resolution and behind it, I have my advanced version, right? So this is a little more granularly controlled in terms of the resolution. Uh, but before, you know, if I wanted to switch it out, I was gonna have to do a lot of manual uh, sort of rewiring, etc. Now I have it all hooked up and beaming so that basically you wanna use the advanced size, you just flip these switches and now you're using the advanced size. So if you wanna use the basic size by default, it's gonna be enabled, see it says on true, and you basically use these images. So hopefully that'll help you speed up the new creation process for images. Uh, it's very, very quick. Okay, on to kind of the meat and the potatoes. There is a new sampler that was just released. So if you don't see this, uh, make sure to update your Comfy. You go into your Comfy Manager and then you click Update All. And when you restart Comfy, you should see in your samplers a new set of samplers. Now. Uh, you may have a whole bunch of them, uh, but the one we really want to focus is this guy right here, IPNDM underscore V. Um, again, you can play with some of the others, uh, but this is the one that I found to be amazing because if you're using it against a Karas basic scheduler uh, for either 10 or 15 steps, I like 15, it is practically almost pixel to pixel the same quality level as uh, what I've been using the Hoin PP2 Karas uh, with the Demon Core model. The same level of quality, but it, we're talking significant speed increases. This is going to be really, really helpful because what this does is kind of change the way that we want to think about how we do our generations, right? As we were talking about a long time ago, using Turbo as a way to kind of do quick previews to get you to your kind of core composition, right? Your kind of how it's laid out in your scene. This is a similar type of uh, scenario where you're kind of doing pretty much production level quality, but at the same time, uh, you're cutting the speed by, you know, over three quarters. And so by doing so, of course, at the end, after you do your manipulation, you might do some photo P work, you might do some final image to image and in painting. Once you're all done, then you'll kind of do your final upscaling and polishing with Bodhi as we did in the last video, uh, or, you know, face detailing, etc. So the, you know, Bodhi also has increased its speed significantly, even from the last video. Um, I'm now clocking in in about 40 seconds or so, 43 seconds to do a full update and refinement, which is pretty phenomenal. So if you take it into consideration, if you're doing a lot of little gens to get you to your core composition, getting things laid out, etc and then bringing it as a final step into Bodhi or any upscaler and refiner of your choice, you're doing your final production setup at the very end uh, to polish it off. So definitely recommend this. This workflow is going to be available to you as always uh, via the description in the video. So masking, uh, this is a popular request by a lot of you. And by the way, thank you so much for providing feedback. If at any point in time there are particular subjects you want to focus on, feel free to leave a comment, feel free to contact me, feel free to go into Discord and you know chat with me. 
uh, happy to help everyone as much as we can. The more we help each other in the AI community, the more amazing works of art that we can put together. So basically, I have a scene that I put together here. And you can see it's a wrestling match, right? I've got a few different characters here. Someone in the foreground, wrestler, I've got some uh, referee, somewhat in the midground, and then a couple in the background. And then, of course, a humongous audience in the very, very, very back, kind of like the distant bokeh effect. Now, if I was to just pop this into detailer, right, your face detailer, it's going to start to do everybody, right? It's going to do your very back guys, your foreground guys, your mid guys, and it might even start to hit some of the background uh, blurred out faces as well. It would be a very weird sort of effect. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on finding ways to face detail just the people that we want. So in this case, right, let's just start with the easiest, which is I want to do just the front person, right? Um, also, side note, by the way, when you do some of the face detailing, if you do multiple people all at the same time, especially if you provide a prompt, right? If I go in here and do my face detailing and I provide, you know, kind of like the expression or some sort of detailing at the bottom, like, oh, I want it to be laughing, right? It's going to typically make not only everyone laugh, but sometimes the faces will all be the same. So it'll look like almost like you have clones everywhere, which is, of course, not what you want, right? You want a diverse set of faces uh, to meet your particular scene. So what we're going to do here, right, we're going to start with the, again, the easiest case first. We just want to do the biggest face and all the smaller faces we want to ignore. There's a parameter uh, in the face detailer called drop size. And drop size basically tells you how many pixels big is the minimum that you want to be able to start to face detail. So by default, it's pretty small. It's only 10 pixels, which is a lot of people. So what I typically do in this case is I will start at very, very high, and then I'll kind of back down uh, along the way. So I might start it at like 150. And if I just simply run it right now, and as you can see, it just popped right through. It didn't do any face detailing at all, which just means that this uh, number is too high. So then I'll back it down a little bit. Maybe I'll say maybe it's 100 pixels and nothing, right? So I'll back it down a little bit more. Now I'll say 80 pixels, same. And I'll say about 60 pixels. And here you go. Now it starts to run because it found at least one face to detail. And as you can see, just as I hoped, it only did my main wrestler. It didn't do any of the referee faces or any of the audience faces, which is great. Now, of course, if you wanted to do the biggest face and the second biggest face, but none of the others, you would just simply slightly decrease this even a little bit more, maybe do 45 or 50 pixels. And again, you'd have to play with it depending on your image, uh, which ones you want to face detail. So that's the easy one uh, because that's you know what you'd want to get done. Okay, so next we're going to want to talk through how do we get some of the other faces, but not all of the faces. So a popular way to do this is to mask out the individual faces we want to, to do. So in this case, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go into my mask editor and I'll just do a very quick boom and boom and boom, right? All three of those faces. Um, we don't want to, let's say, uh, do him anymore. And we obviously, we don't want to do the audience uh, anymore as well. Um, now, instead of using face detail, so I'm going to bypass that for now, um, we are going to just use a regular detailer. So if you start to search for detailer, and you'll have a few different options here, right? So you have detailer seg, 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 et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to just use the regular detailer segs here. Uh, and segs is standing for, of course, segments. And we're basically segmenting out each of the individual people we want to detail. Um, but the question is, well, so how do you get a seg, right? So there's multiple different ways you can do it. You can, uh, you know, use different sorts of uh, sort of like mini models, right? To kind of segment searchers of sorts, right? To kind of parse out your image and to do it. But we're actually going to do it in a very different way. We're going to use our mask and turn that into a set of segments. So here, if we go down here, you can see mask to segs. So if you do that, you can see the input here is a mask. Well, we've of course already masked out our stuff. So we're gonna pop that in and you can kind of leave them alone, uh, but basically bring the segs into your detailer here, right? So you can confirm that happens. 
and pretty much all the other parameters are the same as you would normally do. Um, so we're going to leave the rest the same, and then we're going to bring it out here to our preview bridge. All right, and as you can see, if I zoom in, it's got them. Now, one thing to note, you can see how this looks natural. Obviously, we have the original face here, which is not now detailed. Uh, but if you look in the back, right, you can see, well, they have the faces here, but you can see it doesn't look very realistic. So part of what you're going to have to figure out as you're working through this is how do you best use the denoise and which people you're going to uh, kind of detail out to get to that right balance. So, you know, this obviously was the appropriate amount. What I would do for the people in the back, right, I would do them separately. And for your denoise, I would just denoise just a little bit, right? Here we're at 50%, which is a lot. Obviously, the higher you go with the denoise, it's going to give you a significant uh, change, right? You're giving more control to the AI to, uh, to do your detailing of your faces. And if you do less, it's less. Now, if I go back to the original image here for a second, you can see, if I zoom way in, right, it's already blurry, which is great. So you're not really going to typically see those people anyways. So you may just want to do just a little bit, right? Do maybe about 30, 35%, so 0.35. And by doing so, you'll just be able to get enough face detailing in to be able to distinguish it as a face, but it's blurred because, of course, you are going to keep it blurry. Uh, you can also, by the way, in your specification prompts here, say blurry, right? You can say blur, blurred uh, referee face or blurred male face, uh, and that's going to help you a lot as well. So lots of different ways that you can play with uh, to get it to the right level, but at least you can see that it's really, really easy to just simply do a mask, then to mask the segs, and then use those segments in the detailer segs to get to your end uh, output. So for the, for the final example related to segmenting of faces, we are going to look at now, how do you segment the smallest faces first uh, and not the big faces? So in this case, you know, the faces are actually pretty decent. Um, you know, a few of them could probably use a little bit of work, but we're actually going to see how do we just get the back row here, right? We just want the smallest faces worked on uh, for whatever our, you know, image needs are. So in this case, uh, we are going to, again, enable our face detailer. And we're already, of course, already piped in here. But instead of face detailer, we're actually going to go back to our uh, detail segs again. Uh, however, this time, our segments are going to be done a little differently. There's something called segs filtered ordered. And what we're doing, we're basically putting an order, a kind of a list together of the people to do. However, we wanted to only do that back row or so. Instead of doing descending, which is, of course, going to start at the biggest ones first and working their way smaller, we're going to make it ascending. So we're going to start with the smallest faces first. Uh, take start basically says which face do we want to start with because it's going to index them, right? It's going to put them into a list. We want to start with the smallest one first. In the case, by the way, where you have, a, again, that audience like uh, with our wrestling scene, you may want to start it at, you know, 20, right? Or you may want to, you know, play around with it a little bit. Um, but in this case, we're going to start at zero for our classroom scene here. And we're going to change the take count, right? How many faces do we want to do? Uh, we're going to do, let's take a look at our image here. Let's do about 11. So we'll say 11. Okay. And everything else should be pretty much the same. So we are going to uh, pipe that in. And we're going to pipe that out. And so one final thing that we wanted to add uh, was, of course, we need to do a B-box of all the faces. So in this case, I added a B-box detector for segs because that's going to filter into your segs filter, right? You're getting all the segments, then you're filtering it to a smaller list and then bringing that down uh, into your detailer here. So you can see you can define the threshold of how many to provide, etc. cetera. Uh, the crop factor, again, the drop size, right? If you want to have a smaller or bigger list, and you can see as, as I zoomed in here, uh, it, did, it did actually change some of the faces. Now, the question, of course, is, well, why didn't it change all of them? Well, that's because of the drop size, right? So some of the images, some of the faces were a little smaller and weren't picked up. So again, you have to, you have to play with it a little bit. You could probably uh, reduce the drop size 
uh, even smaller, like call it maybe even five pixels, especially if, if you're not dealing with an audience like the wrestling scene, right? You know that you want to include in that overall list. And then from there, of course, you'll want to do it. So something to play with. But in terms of just, again, the keynotes you're going to want to involve, one is the beatbox detector to bring the full list of faces. Then you want to filter that list down using the segs filter order, right? And you can start ascending and, you know, those parameters. And then finally, you're going to pipe those filtered segments into the detailer. And by the way, side note, if you wanted to do kind of like the reverse of them, you could use the remain segments, which is going to be the segments of everyone else. So if you did the back row first, and then you want to filter this and pipe the remaining segments to a different detailer, you could do that as well. And that could then help, you know, take care of the other uh, faces as well, if you wanted to. And let's now go to our bonus. So a lot of the times you'll get an image really, really in a good spot, but it just needs that little bit of polish, right? You want it to kind of almost seem like a movie or you want it to seem like a TV show and you're just not quite there. You, you have it pretty good. Of course, as always, you can use your image adjustments and a lot of the other functions and features uh, with a lot of detailed parameters to try to kind of tweak it. And of course you can throw it in Photoshop or Photopea as well to do a lot of that sort of thing. Uh, but I did find an amazing new node that's just one node. It's called Cinematic Look. And it's very, very cool because you basically have six different options of different types of cinematic looks that you want to do. Uh, and I have them kind of one by ones just so we can kind of go through them together. But you can see here's the original image on all of them. I see I did a little face detailing as well. But here's kind of like the modern movie look where it has a nice kind of richer saturation. It, it kind of uh, does a lot of a little bit of blending. Also, the background gives a little bit of grain as well to give it a nice feel. If I go to the next one, this is called Retro. So it has a kind of that orangey sort of warm side of feel. It kind of uh, almost over contrasts a little bit to give it kind of like a like almost like that 1970s movie type of uh, perspective. The next one is Clipped. You can see if you go in here, like some of the snow here is kind of cleaned up a little bit. So it's a little bit cleaner. Right. The next one is broadcast. So you can see, you know, again, it's a little bit of cleanup. It kind of brings a little bit of blue into the background. So uh, and then finally, you have a couple black and white options as well. It's a high contrast version, uh, almost like the traditional film noir type of movie. Uh, and then a kind of a slightly warmer version. But you can see in terms of the actual node itself, image goes in, image goes out and you're done. So definitely recommend this. This is a very quick fix, making your images post-production ready. Um, but otherwise, as always, thank you so much uh, for sharing with everyone and we'll catch you all soon.